Okay, so it is a recording. So hello. So in this little uh, video, I'm going to show something special today. So I'm going to talk about motion matching a little bit. So as you may know, there is this talk somewhere on the web. It's called uh, Motion Matching in the Road to Next Gen Animation that I did a couple of uh, years ago. And at some point, whoa. So at some point in this presentation, I show some code uh, that shows motion matching. And I want to do a little discussion of, of like w ways of implementing motion matching. So maybe just to start, like just what it is. So motion matching is the way to find the best pose to play, uh, the less, best frame to play in a big kind of mocap. So let's say you have an hour of mocap uh, of some guy running around with different styles, with different things happens. And so like, it's not just for navigation, it's for anything. Uh, so the way we, it works is that we're going to look at each pose and find a one that matches best what we want to have in the gameplay. So the gameplay has uh, some goals, like want to go somewhere, want to have some things. And basically, like the gameplay has one list of things that needs to happen. Like, for example, have some pose, go somewhere, have some event uh, happening at some time, have some style. Uh, so so that like makes a point in a big dimensional space. And in our mocap, we pre-processed -pre all the frames in the mocap have one of these points. So one way of seeing the problem is that like the mocap is just a big pile, like lots of little points in a very high dimensional space. And gameplay says, okay, try to be as close as possible to this point. So we need to find this point there. So, so the other way of seeing it is that we have this big square of numbers and every row uh, is one point it's like a database and every row uh, is a point and every column is a dimension and every feature for example uh, like in motion matching a feature is for for pose matching like let's say one feature is to match uh, some set of, of bones so some set of bones uh, uh, in 3D, their position so that they match is like some subset of dimensions. So a feature is has a couple of dimensions. And so that's a feature. It's just a bunch of columns that can be evaluated on all the poses in the mocap. And then gameplay, uh, during gameplay, we, uh, so gameplay comes in at runtime. Gameplay. Wow. So I just, but this little thing here. So that's the reason why I'm doing this today. I just want to try it actually. So gameplay gives us one point, like gold point with all the dimensions. And we try to find which row is the closest. So that's, that's about it. And, but the problem is that in my presentation, I said something like make a, like the list of poses here and maybe in the poses, like like we could theoretically have anything uh, with like varying numbers of things so like if there's vectors inside one pose like for some number of bones and the number of bones you don't really know how much it's going to be so this won't be uh, in memory just completely aligned like this we want this to be really a block of numbers so it's going to be re very easy to find uh, the nearest neighbor so that nearest neighbor algorithms for them to work you really need to be just a big list of numbers there. But like to be flexible, like we all need to have a list of features and we want to be able to add them and remove them. So that's kind of problem. Like how do we do we make like a vector like of numbers here have like varying numbers of elements depending on what's happening? So one way to see the problem is that like let's say you have this big block of numbers and that's when first thing that people do like they, they they write something like and that for me it's some sort of it's the main problem is that we're we don't really uh be, are we're not really equipped to have like 2d vectors like let's say you start with your vectors uh like or whatever you have in your game uh you, you have some sort of like vector that di dynamical that di dynamically uh made vectors and and then you'll make your class uh some some struct or your pose and then have a big and inside the pose there's going to be some sort of vector of of like trajectory points for example like you would have 
three points uh, and then the points themselves will have some things so inside the points there's going to be different things so and, and then here you'll have your list of poses another vector And then you're going to fill that with all of this. And all of this is going to be like everywhere in memory. And that's the main problem with, I would say, half the implementations of motion matching make this error of not trying to put things very neatly aligned in memory with really just one big block of numbers. Uh, and, and then you, you, the nearest neighbor, like we, we could, let, let's, I'm going to like try to code something today. Uh, so I'm going to start from scratch. Like, like, let's just make an array of numbers. Let's say you you don't have already like, and most people actually don't have a nice little data structure for just a simple 2D array that is not dynamic. Like we want all this to be like in memory, this row, then this row. Like this is not dynamic. Like it can't go bigger. So the trick is just to to to, to make like the simplest thing that comes to mind. Like you make a like uh, array 2D and you just wrap a, a vector in there and you, you template this to, to what you want type name uh, so you template this like this so that's your data and then you, you when you create that you give it uh, some number of rows and columns and you keep that here so int rows and calls so that's a number of rows and columns so you just initialize this something like that you can make it more pretty i guess uh and, and then you i guess you need to call to make data on the correct side, size, so uh, set uh, re resize, resize, that's a thing. So R times, is that it? Resize, I, I don't actually, like, I haven't practiced this at all, so normally, like, I don't even, uh, I never use vector, like, there's already something in, in the game that you want to use, so I'm not even sure. Let's verify that. Vector resize, that's actually what's it supposed what it looks like, probably. Yes, resize, resize. Yes, that's doing what I think it's doing. So and let's forget about strict pose. We we want it like to have a nice array 2D. And then when you want to 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 go find an element in there, so you, you'll do something like uh T blah blah like a reference to an element in there. So you are just gonna call this get or something within so some number of so some index for r and c so yeah like this r and c like that's a total number of rows and columns this is just trying to index it it's kind of sad naming but i'm i'm lazy today so and i'm gonna return uh, that, uh, and then you index with the little rules like the little rules so uh, like it's just the index is number of columns here times where what row you are. So and then plus plus uh, the, the columns. So it's gonna be r times uh, calls. So that's a number of dimensions plus c, and that's it. Like and then you can have a constant version of that. If you feel like being const uh, like, yeah that's important actually so that's what you want something like this you can add more things and and then you'll have like a, a view like sometimes you want to like have views inside your array so you'll be able to just like like when you want to tell some piece of code to write somewhere in your array you want to give it like a, a, a slice but let's not worry too much about that now. Just keep it like this, and then you'll have our we'll have our points like our list of points. Like that's like just list of poses 
it's just this big grid and like that's our points and I'll, I'll call this array load array 2d now we have a big 2d array of points that's our points and uh, we'll have some number dimensions so int then count so let's say you like in motion matching normally the number of dimensions is going to be like maybe maybe uh, 10 or 20 for the current pose matching maybe 10 or 20 for the future trajectory matching and then maybe 10 or 20 for uh, like style matching uh, like choosing the style and all these different things so it's going to be between 20 and 60 dimensions so let's say 50 and the number of poses normally like you go to mocap a couple of days and uh, like uh, let's say uh, for a full game you could go to mocap like like 50 days so you'll end up like depending on your budget for memory if you have like 500 megs of budget for your animations that means like more than maybe two three hours of gameplay animation and let's say you put all this in there so you have uh, 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 so, so, so what you actually want is like like number of second like like hours of data okay let's say you have three hours and then uh you, so you have some number of of, of 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 frames per second so 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 your uh your fps for your data like it's gonna be 30 or something so you you want like like very dense ways of matching so so 30 fps for matching uh, so it doesn't mean you'll have to search uh, uh, at 30 frames per second but it means your data is like you have poses every 30 second uh, 30 frames per second so it means that your actual uh like point count is hours times uh there's 60 minutes per hour and 60 seconds per uh and then fps so that's your number of points so and if you punch this here so let's say we said 3 times 60 times 60 times 30 so that's uh, looking at uh, what google says it's this number three hours it's 300 thousand poses that's our target we, we want to match really quickly like the nearest neighbor on 300,000 points and it turns out that, that it's not actually hard to match this number of dimensions and this number of points because there's there's very 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 simple uh, like nearest neighbor algorithms like you just i'm gonna like say like the punch like at the end of this video i hope i'll be able to start like give an intuition for that i'm not sure i'm gonna go like to the end but look, the trick is just to cluster your points and then just search the closest clusters and that's it you can go like it's going to look like 100 microseconds to search into these large number of points in large number of dimensions so so yeah so it's going to be the number of points uh, and then number of dimensions so that's our points Uh, is that cool? Like, where are you like this? Point count? Yeah. Bon. So that's our point. And then you can fill that with your data. But like, one problem that people have normally, like, uh, uh, but let, let's say I, what, we fill it with random just for now. So I'm going to loop on the, on my, uh, so that's the, 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 the row, like the, the, the poses, pose index, starting at zero. And Pose index smaller than point count. The pose and point is synonym for, for me now. And then we're going to loop on the dimension. So, so the points uh, is so I, I, I'm gonna get uh, this pose index dim index. I'm gonna set it like th this returns like uh, it's this guy. Like I can actually write on this. 
So I'm going to say rand uh, something, like rand, rand divided by like rand max, or uh, like, I'm not sure, like what's the best way to, the best way to rand me. Yeah. The stack overflow says do something like this, or I could do the, the actual like C++ thing. Well, don't really matter, like that's just rand. Uh, static cast float rand static cast float rand max mm. okay whatever that so that's random points is that good why are you red expected this why why do you expect this okay does this compile first compile so 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 this is like the goal but let's just like do our like little test first with less dimensions so let's say we just have like three dimensions and the point count is like we just have 10 points that's our little test uh, and we can like look that our points make sense yeah, we're here and we go in there and we see that our points, our data looks. So we have this and then, can I just add the watch? What's where the was the watch? Yeah, here. I uh, blah blah blah. The, like the, these numbers, do they look like, like yeah, they look like normal numbers between zero and one. So I have like my random numbers between zero and one here. And now the goal is to like find the nearest neighbor. So how like the nearest neighbor work? So it's just like, let's, let's pick randomly one of these. So, uh, so I'm going to choose, you know what? I'm going to like, uh, so random int is this so i'm gonna just like i'm gonna choose one randomly so like winner repose index so i'm gonna like choose one of them randomly so i'm gonna do rand uh, modulo modulo uh, point count so that's my winner so i'm gonna make this point so it's gonna look like Vector float. Uh, that's the winner point. Like that's uh, and that's gonna be our query. Like we know, like our query will be like one of these lines, maybe with some random added, or like like gameplay will ask something that probably is like hopefully gameplay will ask something that is there in there. So our query point is okay that we, for our test, we make it look a little bit like one of these points. So what I'm going to do is something like resize, point count, and then loop on the dimensions of this guy so probably there's a function to, to, to just like do all of this at the, uh, all at once but i'm gonna say something like query points at the index equal to our points get our winner pose index so that's our row that where we we set it up for like query point is uh, equals to this row and then the index so now our goal is to let's let's look at what this looks like. Yeah, so our query point is hmm, it's all a zero. Why? It's all zero here. Hmm, it's not point count, it's dim count here. 
Yeah, so that's why we test this. So query point, that, like we have this point. So our winner pose index was seven. So in there, if we look at the row seven, it's going to be hard because here it's all just like a big mess. So it's hard to see, but probably like we hope it's probably correct. So now we just want to find like to see if we can come up with the simplest possible algorithm for nearest neighbor. So nearest neighbor is we're gonna look loop loop and and loop on the on, on this indices and find the distance for uh, the, this pose. So this point distance. So uh, so we're gonna have like a float distance that we're computing and we start this at zero and uh, so the distance for this pose. Okay, so let's just compute the distance from this pose to our query point. Okay, so what we do is just we loop on the dimensions. And so we're not doing the clustering thing just yet. We just just like just solve the thing as fast as possible without thinking. So we want to look at like the, the distance for this dim. So it will be distance, but it's square distance actually. Like we don't like our cost is the square distance between the points. It's the same. Like the the winner is the smallest cost, smaller square distance, smaller distance. It's all the same. So distance for this dimension. But it's important to do the square because then like it's going to be weird like the Manhattan distance that's not what we want we actual actually want the, the distance not the Manhattan distance like the rectangle distance so square distance uh, it's equal to where we point at this dim index uh, minus so so query point this is dimensions minus our points get at po at this pose index the index so it's this. So that's a distance, but then we want to square distance. So we need to square this. So probably square. Is that a thing? It's not a thing. Let's make it a thing. Okay. And then... Uh, so so we need to add this. So our total square distance plus equals square distance for this dimension. And if this square distance is smaller than the minimum to date, so we need to remember this. So our float, like, like smallest uh, smallest where distance to date like as like and we start that at really uh big so float max small uh, and then int uh, that's the bed like the smallest Mm, the list distance uh, index. We we'll start that at whatever. We'll, we'll override it immediately. So like that's like the winner pose index. Like that's that's cheating. Like that's the, like cheat. like we're not allowed to look at this answer. Like that's the answer. Like let's let's call this answer. Like that's the answer. That we're looking for and that's what we found small found smallest square in the like that's like the winner found 
like winner pose index pound pose and point is the same and so so if our square distance is smaller than what we had before then we remember this uh, we remember that that's in our new smallest distance and then on her pose index that's the winner it's this guy and that's it so that's like smallest like nearest neighbor like nearest neighbor is literally just this if you just do the simplest thing but even this like this is fast like if you have like less than like i don't know like 10000 points like which is like just 5 minutes of mocap or just 1 minute like this this is fast this this you can't beat that like you can beat it if you want like but it's going to be fast like because this is all like very local in memory so that's fast but anyway so we want to beat this uh, let's not try to compute like timing and everything like normally you would go in and like do actual timing and see what happens but the, the only thing we want to do is like like just like look at the winner like winner is this that's what we found And uh, what we wanted to 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 find is is like the answer that we we had at the beginning. Like that's the oh so so if 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 the two numbers are the same, we won. Like we 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 found it in the array. So the one that is the smallest distance. So even if we add some noise here, like it should probably be the same. So let's just try that if if we actually have a nearest neighbor thing. So I we're looking for seven winner seven. So yeah. So it's always the same. It's probably it's because we didn't like seed the what how do we seed this? Seed random number generator C plus plus S rand. Yeah. This is how we seed. We need time. And we need this rand seed rand time null. Yes, so this is straight from Stack Overflow because I never can remember any of these things. So yeah, so it kind of works. So different numbers always finding it. So that's the nearest neighbor. The problem is now like that we have two things we need to do. First thing is to optimize this by clustering. Clustering is like if you look up on Wikipedia what the algorithm for clustering is, it's just open the points, like find some cluster, like just randomly cho choose like 50 points in there, like randomly, like choose 50 points. And then make clusters with all uh, just just these poses. So most poses are, will not be in a cluster, just just those. And then uh, so that's our new like you use this these points as a center of the clusters, and find all the points uh, for all the points. You look at where uh, the center is, uh, like like w w to which cluster they they belong to, depending on like which cluster is small, the closest. And then uh, you 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 recompute the centers then you find for each point to which cluster they belong and then you find the center again and so the cluster will move around and you iterate that like five times and it's and you're good and your clusters are good and then the trick is to just look at the closest cluster and that's it like most of the time it's going to be the correct one so you can save like 99 percent of the time like this yes but that's not the main problem. Like this is kind of easy. The problem is now, like, we had a pose and it was fun, like because we could like just set the trajectory in a pose. Now we have just just these points, just this two D array, 
And this scares people off because it's not easy to just fill the points with like these dimensions, these features. And that's the main problem that people normally have because they start from here and now like the, okay, but how I, I'm going to put the, the position of the feet in there. Like I'm going to be, want to be able to change the features and there's going to be an India editor somewhere and meters or, or someone, someone would want to choose the features and choose which bones and choose the weights. And then the weights, like the weights is important. Like you need to scale these points, like each feature, each dimension with their weight and then scale scale with the weight the gameplay query point also so the trick with the weights is just to square the scale the query points with the weights and pre-scale all the your data with the weights so that this can be really fast and, and just be like normal there's no weights here like all the weights are done in advance on the points and there's a little procedure that weights the query points before sending it in there but yeah, that's not the main problem. So, 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 so there's multiple ways to go about this problem. But one cool way that, uh, like, that uh, Daniel Holden came up with at some point, and that was really fun and exciting, is that we we actually need to 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 have an object with a callback, and we're gonna give it like a place like this feature. Like it's it's just a callback that like it can fill this this list of little numbers so we can give it like the, like please write the your 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 numbers for your features at this place in the big array and at gameplay we ask it to write here for like the current guy so that's a current guy in the world we ask the feature okay for this guy please please fill these numbers in the query vector and during the pre-process uh, the motion matching pre-process you ask the feature to look at the animation and at this point in the animation, please fill this feature for these numbers there. So that was the trick. So a feature is just two callbacks, one at build time and one at, at runtime. And then we can like loop on the features, lo look at their sizes so we know where they have to write. And uh, that's it. That's that's the trick actually. So like, let's see like wh what a feature is, it's just, Feature like now we're gonna do a little bit of C plus plus because we want people to be able to write their own features outside of our system. So someone at the, in gameplay code will want to write new features. So we can't. I I I don't know of any way we can avoid doing the sad uh, or object oriented crap with like. But 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 at least that's not where the data will be. The data will still be just data oriented and no like virtuals and and, and like crap like the modern uh, like object oriented things so a feature will be uh, just uh, three callbacks so there's uh, and it's going to be virtuals and people will have to to, to or, or overwrite those so like the, you need to tell us like what's the size of your feature so when you want to implement a feature you tell the, you want to tell uh, to be able to tell me like how many columns you want to use so you have you have to, to implement that so please if you want to implement the feature, you need to know like how much room you'll need to, to use in, in the big array. And then uh, you'll need to be able to fill a little place in a row, in one of the row. I'm going to tell you, okay, for this row, at this point in the animation, in this animation, please fill this with your values for your feature. So I'm going to give it... So normally I would give a slice, but let's, since we don't have slices and we don't like care, I'm gonna just like call this like like uh, evaluate uh, for 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 yourself like uh, for this for for like for like animation pose at like one animation pose. Normally we we would give like all of them at the same time like all 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 for one animation like we would say okay for this animation just this big region just fill it. Like this big square so and and then the next animation will be like here there's going to be a bunch of, of 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 poses for this feature for this animation there's going to be multiple rows and multiple columns so we could give it like please fill fill this big square in there but like let's say for now we just have one pose so what are we going to give it is first where do you want to put the result because that's a callback that has to write like in there so we're going to give it like please write there 
like it's gonna be a bunch of floats and give it a, a pointer to that like like result location that's the trick that's the trick ladies and gentlemen like you just give it like where to write and that's it and you trust that you're gonna write for size like after that like if this function writes like not the correct size and like overrides like like all hell will break loose like that's a segmentation fault as soon as you like don't write where you're supposed to write but so so that's why you don't, you don't actually do that like you you pass a slice and you check check for a slice is, is is literally exactly like this but you don't own the data you just have a pointer uh, so and uh, like you give it like the, the actual like list of animations so let's call it like, like anim database or pose database or, or or whatever like this is like you're gonna put all your anims there like you, there's a number of animes there there's ways to evaluate animations there's everything is there so you can actually look at the animations one after the other and evaluate them and see where what, what they do so you'll give that so it's going to be a const uh, anim database that you, so that's the anim base. and uh, that's it uh no we, we need to, t to tell it like which pose like which which like which anim so it's probably like so so probably uh yeah like which anim it is anim id uh time with time or like which probably in there there's already the concept of like there's there's a big it's it's already a big anim let's say like let's say it's already a big anim and you have like uh you, you you have int so 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 so, so you can see uh, it's like it's uh it's all anims one after the other uh structure of arrays because we like structure of arrays better structure of arrays than arrays of structure for that so here we're gonna have like all the the like all the anims the start anim star in the C's. so in the like the big list of animations there's probably like you, you'll evaluate animations first so, so you'll evaluate all your animations and build your anim database everything that's needed by the feature so that's like the first thing you, you'll have to do is to evaluate all your anims and put them like you, see, you already have the concept of poses and each pose in your like database like so, so it's going to be uh so so here it's going to be like oriented in the other direction so like here like let's say like all your uh, like okay i'm not expressing myself correctly so so let's say like your entity positions, okay? So you have a vector 2D somewhere, like well, vector 3D, blah, blah, blah. You, you, let's, let's say you, 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 you have your vector 3Ds. So like the entity positions will be a bunch of vec 3Ds. Entity positions. So, so that's like global positions for all the animations for the for the entity, like the root position for all your your animations one after the other and then there's going to be entity rotations and there's going to be like left foot positions like uh, and there's going to be like big arrays for like all the global positions of like the bones that you know that you're going to need maybe not all the bones and here like you know like where each animation starts so the first animation will be this one second animation will be this and the third animation will be this so and this is all the poses of your animation so all animations are one after the other and it's logically just one big animation in here so you'll have here a bunch of things everything you need to evaluate the features uh yeah and you know like the name of the anims like would be like something like string like y you can do whatever you want like uh let's say i don't know what string clue 
Yeah, string, like, and name names. Like, where to find them? Like, in, in your engine somewhere? Like, you need to, to, like, you can get, like, yeah, okay, you can have everything you want here. You can have, like, pointers to the names so that you can actually, like, have everything you need in there. So you have all your, your list of of, of anims, you can evaluate them and pre-process uh, in like the first part of the pre-process will be to build this to have global positions maybe global velocities of bones so everything that you'll then use to make the the callbacks here work so instead of having anim id here i'm gonna just like do int like pose index because that's what we want actually. Like we want everywhere, like it's gonna be pose index. And this will is evaluated at the same like frequency. Like we said 30 FPS. This is at 30 FPS in the anims. So when you play at the anims, like it can be whatever. But here it's at 30 FPS, and here we give it like please at this index. And uh like this index, it's easy to see in which anim it corresponds. So yeah, so maybe from the pose index, that's going to be a little tool, like like you, you, we can know like in which anim it is by looking at the start and disease. So it's going to be in between two 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 uh, two points, two, uh, in a little segment here. So here, like the size of this is number of anims. This is si number of anims, but this is number of points. And here, there's going to be all these other things like orientations, aiming orientation of the gun, and all of this. You can like get that uh, first before like so that the features are going to be going to be really fast to evaluate and then uh, there's going to be like your guy at runtime so the guy at runtime uh like that's that's the runtime like guy the guy uh, the, the, the the character time character data whatever so here you're gonna put everything like pointers to things that you might need from the features to for, for a specific guy running right now in the game. So there's this guy running in the game. Uh, we already computed this like global positions of like like what what's happening with him. We have like the history, like the past history of where he's been. It's accessible from here. And now, so we can think about the second callback, ritual void evaluate or runtime guy so so and now we we have this runtime guy and we still need to write somewhere so but now we're writing in this thing here and so we give it a runtime character data that we won't we won't modify because we just want to evaluate it Our runtime data and uh, that's it. We don't need a pose index because it's not in, a, in a, the animation database. So now, like when we might want a feature, like for like left bone, left foot velocity, you just make a feature and then you, you have a constructor that you you give it like the name of your bone uh, or, or the ID of your bone uh, and the weight. The weight, I guess, could be in there. So I, let, let's just put like. That's gonna be easy. So the weight, uh, what is it like? Yeah, we could just like write it there. So it's gonna be easy. And then you'll have your array of features. So so now so now there's gonna be like the gameplay code or the game the B of your code. Maybe it's not gameplay code. It's like the little piece of code that sits bit between your gameplay and your animation system. We'll have an array of feature. Rocked uh, feature array. But like feature array, like it's not data. It's just our our little list of uh, callbacks uh, feature. Or like it's the only place where we'll need uh, like virtuals. And so we have a virtual call here. But hopefully it won't be too bad. Like at runtime, we still need to call these virtuals, and that makes me sad a little bit because virtuals are like don't don't do that in the hot loop. But like evaluating the query will not be in the hot loop. So we don't actually care about these virtuals. That, that's going to be pretty fast to evaluate this at runtime for each of the little features, hopefully. So feature array will be like uh, a vector of, of those. And since those, uh, it's not really data, it's just like, and it's it's uh, it's virtual things. So we actually don't really want to have their actual real data in there. So let's keep pointers of that. 
not actually sure what's the best way, but uh, anyway, we have our features in our little array there. And uh, yeah, so now the trick is to, 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 to know like for a certain feature, like where it sits in, 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 in the row and in, in, like in which columns like we need to write. So for this, after you've like set this up, like after setting all features, call this. So compute offsets. So we have a little function that's going to compute our little offsets for each of the features. We'll need to be able to know where it starts here. And that's the trick. And so we have a little vector of offsets. Uh, let's also keep like the total dim count, like the number of dimensions, like the, this, this side, like the number of dimensions, we'll know it only after we've filled the features and we've called size on each of them, because each of the features, depending on how we created them, like in the constructor of the feature, like we'll, we'll know, like for the feature, like for future trajectory, like the future trajectory, like somewhere in the editor, some animator will decide uh, like how many points in the future we want. Like maybe it's going to be two, maybe it's going to be three. Uh, so, uh, so, so the size, uh, like number of columns needed for the feature, let's say like there's three points. So if there's just three points and it's a 2D trajectory, so, uh, and there's, so, so that's the velocity, but let's forget about velocity and it's just three points and it's in 2D. So it means it's three times two equals six. And now I'm writing with my mouse, even if I bought this thing. So it should be much better, but it's not here. So this is going to be return, return six for the feature. Future positions will be six if there's three points in two dim dimensions. Anyway, so now compute offsets will be like super simple. We just like look at the features and increment uh, the thing. So like, like, like uh, this, like, like let's say like whatever t or zero, like like the, the current offset, like it's called let's call it offset off off because there's this offset there so off and this can increase so uh, for the features feature feature in the feature yes so yeah that's constant uh, this is this is const also. Uh, const equals zero. Const. Whatever. And then compute offsets. Uh, so it's going to be just a feature that size. And we're going to like increment off with this. But before that, we save it in offsets. So offsets. Push back of the current one. So, so the first one will start at zero. That's why it starts with this. Start at zero, and then increment. And at the end, we know that uh, total dim count is is what where we ended up. So at the end, we added the last one, and we have this. Why are you not happy? Because of this. And uh, yeah, so probably we should like clear this first. Just to make sure that we call this multiple times, it's gonna not freak out. Yeah. But obviously, like if you forget to call this after you, yeah, like probably so, some software engineering guy would come and say, please put private and make sure that we call this at the correct times and whatever. So yeah, so that's it. That's it. So now we can like, like fill uh, a big block of numbers. 
So let's say we, we are somewhere and we want to build the big block of numbers now using like this feature array. So we're going to make the, let's say so, somewhere like void build. So now we build. And we have already the features, like let's say feature array. That's our feature array. And it's already there, like, so, so like, make this. So call, like, the people, like, the gameplay code that makes the feature array, decide which features we want, like, set them up, and please come back with this. And so, 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 blah, 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 make this, and call, like, everybody that wants to add features in there can add their features that they want. And then you call this on the thing, feature array, and so probably this like is actually somewhere, like it's actually outside, like it, it, it's saved by somebody that has the feature array, so some, your actual code, like in your database code, like your matcher or whatever you call it, like there's going to be this, so you can save it, uh, at runtime you'll need it also, so 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 it's best that you, it's not a transient thing. So, so make this, but let's forget about that for now, like just, we don't know where it came from, like we don't know what happens exactly here, but we can call this. And then what we actually want to do is to fill a big block of numbers, but and now we have it, like we can make a, a, an array 2D, uh, uh, of float and we know the size now because we we know uh, like the, the this like there's a function for this guy can tell me like how many poses there are like pose count get pose count yes there's a, a center a certain number of poses in there so we can ask that in the base how many poses you are, like it's it's the size of this, basically. It needs to be all the same. So we, there's an im count and post count probably, and whatever, and while well, you read, yeah, it's because it's a point. And uh, so that's our like matcher data, like, let's call this big block matcher data. And uh, we know the number of points, so like the point count, in point count is our and in database we let's say we also have this and in database make this start by making this and make this whatever order like none of those need the other one just yet and point count is a name database dot pose count and uh, int dim count is feature array the, the total uh, dim count that we just computed this guy it's there make a little accessor so everybody's happy and uh, yeah whatever and then this is point count and this is dim count and our we have our little block of data there ready to be filled and now we fill the thing so we're gonna loop on our like features or our points like we're gonna loop on on whatever like um, like we could loop on our on the features and and fill this block and then this block or we could loop on uh, our names and fill this block and the, like whatever like the, the one that makes the cache more happy so we're gonna let's say uh, for uh, for the features for int feature index and smaller than feature count is uh, feature count is feature array features size probably and feature index plus plus let's say so that's the loop on our feature so the feature is
Is this is uh, features feature index? It looks like I'm writing the same word over and over, over and over again. Uh, that's the feature. And now I'm gonna loop on all the poses. It's the same loop as this one. Mm. And uh, yeah, can I just call it, tell it to, to write its data for the matcher, the matcher that, uh, so yes. So I'm going to call my little function evaluate for animation pose. Okay. So what we want to send, we need to tell it where to write. So let's keep that for the end. The, 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 I need to give it the runtime data. Do I have it? Uh, no, 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 the, the, not the runtime data. My name database. Let's give it the uh, name database. And we want to give it the pose index. But the first thing we need to give it is where to write the result. But where do we write the result? We have the offset in the big block, like this, like where the, the, the number of, like where do we start writing here? Uh, it's what? It's an address. I said it's an address because we don't have slices, because we did not care. It means I just need, I need the, the address of this number and we have we made we made this Let's put that at the top these two things uh, so we have this to get so so and that's how we're going to get the address so it's going to be uh, uh matcher data this is where we write matcher data get uh the row is pose index and the column is what is aha feature so so let's 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 pull this up because that's a fun one is in the part of set like column like feature dim offset like that, that, that's that's where the, the the dimension where this feature start and this is what we made the offsets for and that's the trick that's it like that's not complicated that's really like basic stuff but like people somehow forget like they can actually do that if you want to fill data somewhere in a big block of data you, you, you just need that that kind of thing and you can still be flexible and have things decided at runtime but be super efficient so it's going to be feature array offsets at feature index. And that's it. That's the offset. And just give that. Uh, that's feature dim offset, but that's it. That, 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 that's the first one. So that's the first. That's the, the we're, we're getting this guy here. Like we're. At this drawing Ooh. and so so we actually need the address as this number so let's get the address is that it there comes feature narrative now yeah yeah that's a feature okay Are we happy with this we made the thing and then at runtime, you we, we kind of do the same thing. Like I won't like do the runtime thing. The runtime thing, you just loop and call the other one. Do the same thing. Give it your runtime guy. Make sure that the runtime guy has, has everything it, the features need to evaluate uh, what they need. And here, like you would say something like because you don't want to do this at, at runtime. So like eh, editor only or something. Yeah, if def 
you're only in div because you don't want like people at home like on their playstation won't call this like that does not exist when you're on a playstation somewhere in the world so yes make sure that you don't ship like at load time it's not a good, correct time to do this also this guy like don't don't fill this at runtime uh, hopefully you won't actually need that at all at runtime this is just to make the features it's just to, so that features have already what they need to evaluate but theoretically we don't actually need that it's it's just a nice to have maybe a version of this could exist at runtime not sure that's a big question that's an interesting question is if 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 we need to put this completely available at runtime probably some things in there would be useful only for the features no no you do what you want for that uh, are you happy no member oh yes that's true that's possible so whatever we don't actually care all that much right now about that. I think it's the only thing I wanted to say. Like, I, I guess that that's what I wanted to say today. What, how, what time is it? It's been one hour. Yeah. I want, I, I don't want to, to, to give all the, the, the tricks. Like, that, that, that was the main one. Like, if you have that, you're in business to implement motion matching in, in a more efficient way. It's also for like neural networks and everything like everywhere like there's vectors that need to be built to be sent somewhere to uh, and vec like big r list of numbers that that's what machine learning uh, deep learning all all these things are all about like so you need to be able to convert your like like domain like like your 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 problem domain like there, we're making games there's characters there's legs and and feats and all these like world things that need to get into and outside of vectors and this is the kind of trick to get things in and out of vectors little callbacks features evaluate for runtime guy or for your, at your build and then you can nearest neighbor your way to success and that's what i wanted to say today thank you for listening bye